Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the report with me, Yasmin Khatoun. After over a decade of legal proceedings, pre preacher Abu Qatada has finally been acquitted by a court in Jordan of involvement in violent attacks in 2000. Described as being at the centre of the, in the United Kingdom of terrorist activities associated with al-Qaeda by British press, Qad Qatada's deportation last year raised deep questions about the enforcement of human rights legislation. Nathaniel Amos Samson has been following this story. Over a decade of legal proceedings ended today, as the radical cleric Abu Qatada was cleared of all charges against him. He was deported from the UK to Jordan in July of last year, following a protracted legal challenge by the UK government to remove him. In June of this year, he was acquitted of the charges of conspiring to commit acts of terrorism after a lack of evidence by the prosecutor. Today, the court cleared him of involvement in the thwarted plot aimed at the Millennium Celebrations in 2000. For over a decade, the Jordanian government has worked with the British government to deport him to face trial in Jordan. After he was granted asylum in the UK in 1994, Qatada was finally deported last year following a treaty signed between Jordan and the UK which banned the use of evidence obtained by torture from trials in Jordanian courts involving British deportees. Qatada's lawyer said that the ruling by the court was a victory for due process. المحكمة بالأخير يعني طبقت القانون وطبقت الاتفاقية الأردنية البريطانية وفي ظل تطبيقها لا يجد هناك مجال للمحكمة للحكم بالبراءة وهذا ما كان نحمد الله أن حكمت المحكمة بالبراءة كتارة سو اكيوز ان جوردن ان دي اوكي of providing spiritual support through his writings to men alleged to have planned a series of attacks aimed at western and Israeli targets in Jordan on the millennium eve the British government however was blocked from deporting him due to concerns over his human rights in Jordan some of the evidence against him put forward by Jordan in the original trial that was later thrown out, was gained through the use of torture. Reacting to today's court ruling, a Home Office spokesman made it clear that he not out of the UK. It is right that the due process of law has taken place in Jordan. The UK court agreed that Abu Qatar was a threat to national security in the UK, so we are pleased that we were able to remove him. Abu Qatada remains subject to a deportation order and a United Nations travel ban. He is not coming back to the UK. The conclusion of this trial against Abu Qatada has put an end to one of the longest legal and extradition cases in British history. But the actions by the various powers concerned raise deep questions about the commitment governments have to human rights law. Nathaniel Lema Sansom, The Report. Now joining me to discuss some of these issues is Sheikh Dr. Khalid Fikri, an Islamic scholar, Middle East commentator, and Bernard Keenan, a law, national security law expert and a researcher on national security issues at the London School of Economics, and Chris Dole, director of the Council of Arab British Understanding on Skype. Welcome to you all. Thank you all for joining us. Now, Dr. Khalid, I want to come to you first. Um, Abu Qatada, finally, this is something that you've all been waiting for, right? Yes. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salam Rasulullah. Yes, really. Uh, يعني, this news uh, just show and clarify that uh, Abu Qatada was innocent and according to the trial in Jordan he was uh, you know, now free as a free man and he has all the rights now to, to live freely in, in Jordan and I think this indicates how the media was uh, uh, extreming and in, in, in their labeling him as the most dangerous man or the man who is uh, spreading uh, hatred and he is one of the d most dangerous people how did this happen in Jordan? And within a few months, they found him not guilty in any of the uh, charge which they uh, put or they pointed at him. Uh, really, uh, this just, we would like to just to raise the point that in many cases, there are a lot of lies and there are uh, exaggerating of things which shouldn't be uh, happening, especially when he was here in England. Bernard, what are the implications of this acquittal? Well, uh... I think the, the one argument you could make is that this is uh, ultimately a successful outcome for his legal strategy all along, which was simply that he couldn't go back uh, to Jordan because he was in danger of being tortured there or of being tried on the basis of evidence which was obtained from others by their torture. And he only agreed to go back once there had been a secure agreement between Jordan and the UK that none of that evidence would be used against him. And of course, the trial then collapses. Um, so in that very limited sense, it's a success for Abu Qatada and it's a success for uh, upholding human rights law. But looking at the bigger picture, um, he, I mean, the Home Office are perfectly correct. The chances of him ever coming back to the UK are still very, very, very remote, if possible at all. And that's because this isn't really uh, the issue that they deported him on. Um, so, and th that's, that raises a whole other set of questions. 
Chris, can I bring you in here? I mean, this is something that's been going on for a long time. He was deported just last year, but this is a case that we've all been following. What are the implications of this, of this new verdict? Well, the implications are, are multiple. First of all, he obviously goes free. He is free within Jordan. It's very unlikely he'll be able to travel. And as you've heard, he's not going to be able to come to the United Kingdom. Now, I think there are a myriad questions as to exactly what has happened here in Jordan. Certainly, it's absolutely true that any evidence based on the use of torture uh, you know, lacks any uh, validity. But let's not for a moment uh, believe or, or, or try to give credence to the idea that Abu Qatada is some uh, you know, liberal, non-violent peace activist. No, he is somebody who uh, still supports many of the ideologies of uh, al-Qaeda. He openly supports Jabhat al-Nusra, whilst uh, at the same time, uh, which the Jordanians have, have welcomed, he has criticized the uh, quite appalling beheadings that have been carried out by ISIS. So, uh, yes, there is the issue of the, the court rulings. I have no idea about uh, the, the quality of the evidence that uh, is against him for the Millennium Plots and the early, earlier bombings. But uh, he, he certainly uh, needs to be treated with care. I do want to come back uh, on this issue of um, his implications with Jabhat al-Nusra and IS and so forth and what's going on now. But on the case of Abu Qatar, I know a number of people have been fighting uh, his case on this side, or here in Britain, saying he's, he was innocent all along and that he should be allowed to return. Really, I don't know why they, they raised the point that he wished to return or he may return back. I don't think that he, he may even think of returning back to England. What I understand that he, his family is there, and he I asked to go to Jordan by himself. When he was here, he asked the authority to return him to Jordan. Um, and I would like to say that his place and his base is in Jordan and in the Arabic world. And I don't think at all that uh, Abu Qatada may think that he will return back, even if the authorities allow him. But I, what I'm understanding of his way and his culture and the way he talks is that he is based in the Arabic lands and he is very happy, I think, to stay in Jordan. Bernard, a British judge once described Abu Qatada as a truly dis dangerous individual at the centre of the United Kingdom uh, terrorist activities associated with Al-Qaeda. And I know Chris was just talking about his support for groups which are Al-Qaeda affiliated. What sort of a danger or threat did this man pose whilst he was here? Well, this is the conundrum that we're in, in the, with secret courts. We don't actually know. Um, we don't know the substance of the material which was shown to judges in the various hearings that Abu Qatara had before the Special Immigration Appeals Commission. Um, and whatever the content of that evidence may be, um, that, that would be the same evidence which would be uh, brought against him if he did apply to have his deportation order lifted or if he applied to be taken off the United Nations uh, non-travel list. Um, and so that's why his, his chances of ever coming off that list, if he, if he even wanted to, um, are very remote. Um, but it, this raises bigger questions for the legal system because over the course of the last 12 to 13 years, we have developed um, across cases like Abu Qatada's, but others as well, um, uh, essentially a parallel system of justice whereby the government are able to operate on the basis of classified material and it's very difficult for the individuals concerned to effectively challenge that in court. Um, so the legacy of Abu Qatada, if we're looking 10, 20 years into the future in terms of how he'll be remembered uh, in the legal system. It, it, it's, it's a sort of a story of, a, of the creation of a whole other system of justice in the UK and that is something that we're going to have to live with and it's quite troubling. Chris, um, we just had a creation of another level of justice system in the UK. Is that something we can live with? No, I think that it's been extremely embarrassing to the uh, British authorities, the whole 11-year period. I agree entirely with your previous speaker. I mean, if he was uh, guilty of, of such crimes, then I, I always wondered why he wasn't put on trial, you know, here, here in Britain. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's gone to Jordan in what was an extremely messy process. And it has not shown the legal authorities in the final, the finest light. That said, I would emphasise still, though, that uh, you know that doesn't mean to say that he is some, you know, moderate that we should all admire because his public statements, his public utterances, what we know in the public record, uh, are certainly far from that. And he certainly has not done 
uh, anything positive for the uh, British community. And in fact, to the contrary, uh, the complete opposite. Do you think he could have had an implication on British fighters going to join groups like I ISIS um, and IS, who he obviously has um, stood up against them and has said, for instance, over the kidnapping of Alan Henning, which he spoke out about about nine months ago. Do you think he might have been able to have an impact on that? Well, it would be uh, you know, great if that was the case, and I think that's probably what the Jordanian authorities are hoping, because there's quite a lot of sympathy for ISIS within Jordan. They've got purportedly several thousand people who may be considered to, uh, you know, believe in their cause. And as a, a well-known Salafi preacher, uh, I'm sure that they are hoping that he will be able to exert some sort of influence over them. But I think also I would like to see uh, uh, Abu Qatada to, uh, you know, renounce some of his earlier views and actually advocate more than just opposing uh, these sort of gruesome beheadings, but also a, uh, a far more truer version of Islam that is respectful of other people, other religions and other faiths. Thank you, Chris. Um, can I bring you in, Sheikh Ali? Yes, really, um, I disagree with uh, our guest regarding Abu Qatada when he was here. There was no charge against him at all. And if the authorities here found him guilty in anything, they wouldn't release him. But I think that's what Chris yeah, was this saying. Is, uh, this is the point. Yeah. The other point is uh, supporting other uh, rebels in, in Syria. I think many, many people in the whole world are supporting the, the rebels against the Bashar Assad regime, which is a dictator regime. And if you uh, say that there are a lot of people who seek freedom and they want to liberate themselves from the regime of Bashar al-Assad, this is uh, something that all the, 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 the free people will support, will add. Without going deep, I'm not talking about ISIS or others, but the Muslims in, in Syria were all fighting regarding their freedom against this barbaric regime who killed more than 200,000 within the last three years. So now when we say that, yes, we support the Muslimin, the, 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 the rebels in, in Syria, even America and the other world, the free world, they said, yes, we don't want this corrupted the dictator regime of Bashar al-Assad. The only difference here is that who will come over after Bashar? Okay, let's stick to the, to the topic uh, for this moment. We are going to be discussing Syria. Um, but Chris, do you want to come back on that? I do, because I think there's a world of difference. I oppose the regime of Bashar al-Assad. It's a brutal regime that has an appalling human rights record. But that doesn't mean that you go to the extreme of supporting a group that is part of al-Qaeda and its violent record against civilians. And I think there is a distinction. The way to oppose Bashar al-Assad is not to resort to the ways of such groups that commit mindless violence against civilians. And I think uh, most Muslims in this country know that perfectly well. OK, before we move on from this topic, can I come back to you, uh, Bernard? Now, Abu Qadada's case has plagued, I guess, the system for, for a number of years. With this acquittal, with this change, um, how will we redeem ourselves? Well, um, as I said, the system itself remains firmly in place. And if anything, it's been entrenched in recent years. Um, it would be interesting to see if anybody has the bravery to call for an inquiry into what the content of information was which justified Abu Qatada's extended period in prison, uh, which even the, the court did. Is it her... likely for something like that to happen? I think it's extremely unlikely. I think um, it's a political issue, and uh, it's very unlikely that anyone in the British political establishment is in a position to make that call. But you have to say now, in, in light of all of this, um, and in light of the. Uh, what I think what people publicly perceive when they can't see the justification for locking someone up, all you see is an unfair system. And if you want to counter the narrative that Western democracies are fundamentally unjust, particularly against Muslims, um, you've gone about it entirely the wrong way from the start. And um, how, how you go about correcting that, that remains to be seen. Well, thank you so much. Um, we are going to have to move on from this particular segment. I'd like to thank um, my guests for their time. But after the first day of <laughs>